Thanks for staying with us. Now, today's youth have been called all sorts of names, from lazy to immature with no death or grief. Now, there is a high level of impatience where a youth, for instance, you know, you employ a young person, the person isn't ready to spend time to grow. They just want to become CEO now, now, now. <laughs> they see those ahead of them and they want to acquire everything that they see them have. Now, this display of a microwave approach to attaining almost everything in life, um, everything in life must come first from somewhere. So this we are asking, you know, why is this so? Why is there horrid nature of wanting to get things now, now, now. And if it is there, who should be held accountable for the crop of youth that we have today? Now, please let us hear what you have um, to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Um, so, Uti and Sanzi. I know Uti doesn't like talking about this matter because it's almost like every time she wants to talk about it, they're always fighting her. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> going to start with you, Uti. Um, so this conversation, I think we've had it in different ways, you know, several times, you know, but I think it's something that will keep on happening on until maybe some people mm. were able to redeem some people to the other side. Now, if you go on social media, it is really crazy, right? It seems like everything is instant. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and I, he was saying that we need to understand that the crop of young people that we have today are not our generation that, you know, believed in, um, okay, delayed gratification, I can patiently wait for my turn and all of that. It seems like everybody in this present generation, they want it and they want it now, you know. So why is this so? Maybe I should come to Uti first. So, I mean... <laughs> This is a very interesting one because, yeah, I have very mixed feelings about it. Um, I always tell people that I'm young, but I'm old at the same time because I'm, I, I feel like I'm that old school teacher, right? But you can't, um, you can't ignore culture. Culture is all pervasive. It changes, it molds, but it's also, it's from the people. We've moved on, the world has moved on. The world is now always switched on. We're used to 24 hour everything. We're used to instant TV. You know, we grew up at a time when you gotta wait till 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. for the TV to come on. You know, now we're in a time where, you know, kids wake up in the morning, first thing they say is, mommy, can I put on the TV? So we are in a world that is always switched on. So to be honest, the world has moved on. The world is also not in that place now where there's delayed gratification anymore. Now everything is at your fingertips. Before you had to wait for an ad to finish playing to continue watching your show. Now you can watch it without ads. Now you can fast forward the ads. You can skip You it. know, the world has <laughs> moved on. So it's not really for me the fact that there's a hastiness because also when you look at the age of, you know, some of the young billionaires and young people who are doing great things in the world today, they're in their early 20, you know? Forbes has most 30, most powerful under 30 or whatever that thing is. It's getting increasingly younger. Our young people um, are able to do so much more than the generations that came before them. I think for me, what is disconnected is the lack of understanding that there is a process and that process is still fine to go through. So yes, I can be a YouTube star overnight tomorrow, or I can go into Big Brother and I can become a celebrity overnight. But that doesn't erase the, the requirements of a good foundation, of you having the understanding of hard work, of you having understanding of the value of money, of you knowing right from wrong. All those things are values that must not be eroded, no matter how fast the world gets. And I think that's where there's a disconnect, where you find that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things are now getting lost. A lot of values are being lost. A lot of belief systems are being eroded. Even our culture is being eroded by the outside influences that says everything is switched on, everything is now. I don't need to wait to get anything. So when somebody is telling me, oh, it's good for you, you know, delayed gratification is good for you. Actually, I beg to differ. That's what you're going to get back from that generation. Mm. They can't relate to it. So it's not necessarily that that is the problem. It's just certain things that are being lost along the way. Absolutely. Let me come to you, Sandy. Right. So for me, um, first of all, I would like to cancel out the fact that they are lazy. No. The average youth 
is not lazy. Maybe to a certain extent, we're immature and, you know, maybe shallow to a certain extent, like I said earlier, but we are definitely not lazy. So the hastiness to, you know, live on the fast lane and jump gun, I would say this is what um, I understand is the cause of it. Um, Uti mentioned something about um, um, the satisfaction and jumping process. And yes, I definitely do agree with that. But primarily, I think it's because of lack of results. So um, our parents would tell us that, um, of course, there is the home training and everything. And, and so for a lot of people who are patient enough, they might decide to, you know, walk through the process and trust and, you know, there must be a conviction inside of you that, you know, this process that I walk through it, that I'll come out better at the end of it. But for a lot of people, you've watched your parents tell you, oh, um, um, take your time, there is process and all things will come out well. And then... You're a year old, nothing is getting better. You're five years old, nothing is getting better. You're 17, it's getting worse. You're 25, you're 35, and you're still watching the same parents moving from a five-bedroom duplex to a three-bedroom apartment and now to a one-bedroom apartment. It's getting worse. So for somebody like that, because there is nothing that is as rewarding or, or reassuring as results. So when you're telling me delayed gratification and I'm looking at your life, being my parents' role models, and I'm not seeing what you're telling me, of course, I would think, is it that you don't know what you're saying or something is wrong or you missed it somewhere? So that already creates a disappointment, a distrust. So I, as the young person, would tell myself, you know what, whatever these people are saying, I'm not willing to take this path. So I'm willing to try another path, which is now the Instagram that we see, you know. And so because we have a lot of young people who are thinking in such manner, we have a lot of them creating Twitter. So I don't have to Twitter, WhatsApp. I don't have to pass a message and wait for the Telegram or whatever fax to get to or ship it, you know. So I'm getting it Insta Instagram. message, Instagram and everything. So these are things that... Um, um, young people are creating to make life easier for, for, for ourselves in order to achieve and at the end of the day everybody wants to achieve a result and that result is a comfortable life a happy life mm. you know so like I said I think um, um, the hastiness stems hugely from lack of results and disappointments coming from the lives of our parents I know that I feel, I've, I've seen that um, um, this, I, I, yeah for me personally I've watched my parents I love you mom and dad but <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was my story at some point I looked at it and I said you know what I'm not going to settle for this um, 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 Almost local like, like life with, with exactly you know <laughs> there has to be more so I set out on my own path in as much as I'm grateful I'm grateful for the values they've um, you it's know put inside of you. me because it's helping to guide my path but still I think I'm doing things from a different uh, um, uh, 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 path you know no, so, so. Botanzi, you are not in the category of the kind of conversation that we're driving today because even in that path where you have chosen to say you know what I don't want to mm. go through this route that they have taken I want to find my path and all of that you are still level-headed you are still insisting that you have to do the things it's a the right conviction way. that's my point yeah. but the crop of people that we have today they can do anything as long as this results that you're talking about. Mm. So is it money in, in, that is enough? Now, um, Uti mentioned something about overnight success. Uti, is there anything? Is there anything as overnight success? Because the guest we had yesterday said something. That even these entertainers that you see, oh, the person in blue. Do you know how many sleepless nights the entertainers had? Overnight trying to write music. Some failed, some did not fail. They will not just show you the process. They only show you the end product. Mm -hmm. And so you see it and you say that it's overnight success. So is there any such thing as overnight success? So there is, there is the belief from what you see that people can become an overnight success. And my question is, what is your definition of overnight? Now, the people, let me use a pop culture reference. The people who go into the Big Brother house, would you call them an overnight success? Because they go into a house, they stay in there for however long. They went in, for lack of a better word, unknown, and they came out celebrities. Would you class that an overnight success? Or would you say that the work they've done in the Big Brother house categorizes them as overnight success? Now, I don't think there's any such, there's no such thing as, as an overnight success. It, it may be one in a million where literally uh, maybe you won the lottery or something. Then maybe truly you are an overnight success. But it takes work. 
I mean, if you know what people have to go through, let me stick with my reference. If you know what people have to go through in the auditions for Big Brother, in all of that, even that takes determination. Even that takes planning. That takes you, you know, creating a persona that you can sell to the producers of this show who think that you're entertaining. So you don't just fall into it. Um, in truth, I, I think that, I, and when Tanzi said, oh, the first thing I'll say is we're not lazy. I think that the reality of it is that the level of endurance has reduced and it's not a choice for mm-hmm. endurance to reduce mm-hmm. human nature um what is that what is that um darwin phrase now that says oh, uh, i think only, we evolve only the strong survival or whatever it is mm-hmm. you evolve based on what you have when our grandparents had to walk miles and miles and miles without cars they were stronger physically when we had to wash clothes with our hands without washing machines. We were stronger physically. Our children will most likely never have to wash clothes with their hands or very rarely have to do that. So from a physicality point of view, we are getting weaker, if I can use that phrase in a non-negative way. We're not as strong. So when they say, well, you know, when that laziness reference, I think sometimes communication is the problem we do lack endurance. So the things that our parents could do, we're not strong enough to do it. You do physical activity and you think to yourself, oh, I'm tired. It's not about fitness now. We're not built for that endurance because we don't have the kind of life that they led. We've not been walking five kilometers, 10 kilometers. We're not, we do it for fitness, but that's not the general lifestyle. So we're not as strong. So when we come to talking about success and we say, is there an overnight success? There isn't, but it's again, Um, I like when Sanzi mentioned that her parents instilled values in her. We're still coming back to the crux of the issue, is that there's nothing wrong with you wanting to be a YouTube star. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to be, quote unquote, an overnight success. The question there is, who are you? What is it that drives you? The question I asked uh, last week, I was driving uh, down the road and something just hit me. I was watching the world around you as you do when you're driving. And I said to myself, how many Nigerians, if you are offered a hundred million naira as the only consequence for killing a person, would you do it? And I said, in truth, I've asked this question to a couple of people and I've gotten a range of answers from, oh, well, I'll do it for one million. I'll do it for, so there's no other consequence. There's no negative consequence. The only consequence is, yo, here's a hundred million naira cash. Kill somebody and I'll give you this money. That's all. How many people would jump at it? Think about it. So that's where we're, that's the problem. The fact that that even becomes a reality is that we've lost our, our beacon. For what is right and what is wrong. Now the only That's beacon we're following thing. is money. So what causes mm-hmm. this? What is what's the what's the so is it as a result of failed promises that we heard over and over and over again growing up? That you know you, you know people will promise you you are the future leaders, you are the this, you are the that, and you're growing up. You're not seeing that future. I think maybe that is what has brought that impatience. Where people are saying, no, 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 I cannot wait anymore. Yeah, because it seems like every promise that they made to us while we were growing up, to say you're going to go to school when you read your book, you become, you understand? (laughs) When you read your book, you become this, you become that, and you are here. And it seems like, so what is the 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 root cause of that? I think... um, well, frustration has a way of messing with the human mind. It goes back to values for me. If your values are not strong enough, there are certain decisions that when you're in so much pain or disappointment or frustration, you won't even know when you double into it. Take, for instance, someone who goes into prostitution because um, you need money, you need an apartment, and yes, all the values that you... You don't really have to be a Christian for you not to choose to not, you know, prostitute and all that. You just have to have that value that I don't want to sell myself, right? So it gets to that point where you need so much and there is pretty much nobody to call on and you're at this place where you don't know what is right and wrong again. You just want to survive. Obviously, you're, you're going to sell yourself, right? It's, it's the next, because you don't have that strong backup that tells you, you know what, no matter what, 
go through this. It gets better. If you don't have that strong conviction, if you don't have that driving force, um, 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 that your life, um, how do I put it? If you don't have a solid thing that drives you, that your conviction is built on, chances are you're probably going to kill someone. You're probably going to do Yahoo. You're probably going to, I don't know, do something way different just mm -hmm. to make sure that you survive. Because at the end of the day, all humans are selfish and we are all fighting for survival. It's true. You know? Hmm. So, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll just add to that. I mean, the reality of it is that what have we seen? This generation of young people, what have they grown up seeing? They've grown up seeing corruption normalized. They've grown up seeing monies, you know, the kinds of monies. The, Snakes the, the swallowing that money are, and monkeys going out with money. You know what I mean? <laughs> So you've seen that. And on the flip side, they've seen the degradation. They didn't go to the quality of schools. You know, this generation we're referring to, in our time, unity schools were the place to be. We were fighting to go to federal government colleges. Now, who knows what they're like? So they don't even have that. So you've not, there's nothing to, to show you that this perseverance worked. So we saw our parents, like, you know, they went through that trajectory of, um, I, I, I take it from the opposite side for Sansi, but they started from the one bedroom apartment when they got married. They worked all their lives. They got into, you know, maybe senior jobs and they got into, into, into better housing. Now, everybody's seeing that big house and that's where they want to start from. Hmm. Nobody hmm. wants, there's no time now to say, ah, I want to wait for the trajectory. I want to grow from a one bedroom apartment into a three bedroom apartment into a four or five bedroom house. Anybody got time, got time for that? Everybody Nobody got time for thinking, that. You know, what? About it. you know, I want to, blow, you know, you, you stop a seven year old kid on the street and you ask them what car they want to drive. They can tell you it's a Range Rover. As a, but dude, what are you going to do to earn that and money to buy voice. that car? He doesn't have an answer for you because he doesn't have any role models that he has watched who have gone through this trajectory that says, if you do X, Y, Z, if you do A, B, C, you will turn out this way. So if you look at even the successful people in our country, in our environment, when you look at the top businessmen, you find that somewhere in there, there's some connection or there's something Nobody truly believes that I can replicate what this person has done. Without any connection. Without anything. And that is a huge thing because what you're then saying is, look, dude, no matter how hard you try, there's no way for you. Hmm. So really, actually, In fact, you will now see some to... prayer points in churches say, Father, uh, locate my... What did they call her? How did they put it? May I locate help. my 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 destiny helpers? Destiny. So, <laughs> you know what? You know, we're going to so go on a break. That, yeah, go ahead, Uti. Tell... Conclude quickly. We, we want to take a yeah, break. So you know, Father, you're just trying to tell... You're, you're trying to... Or rather, what I'm trying to say is that what we now need to do to start to close this gap is to be able to show young people successful people who have done things that they can replicate it's not for us as nigerians to be saying oh anthony joshua is nigerian so everybody no we need to show our homegrown heroes hmm. people that have done things that we can replicate that don't have lost years in their story hmm. okay you know what we'll take a very short break when we return we'll take some of the comments and we'll, we'll continue the conversation stay with us we'll be right back <laughs> 